My name is Mike Weed. I'm Professor of Applied Policy Sciences at Canterbury Christchurch University, and this is my two-minute explainer of our evidence review of outdoor COVID-19 transmission. We turned our review around in 15 days, but despite this, we're very confident we haven't missed any significant evidence. We looked at collected evidence from more than 25,000 cases, the impact of time spent outdoors, and what happens at mass gatherings like football matches, concerts and protests, and we found very few examples of outdoor transmission. Much of the evidence comes from pre-lockdown, before social distancing. This means we're confident there's a low risk outdoors during everyday life because people tend to naturally distance, maintain personal space and spread out a bit more outdoors. When outdoor events and activities include elements where natural distancing is breached, there are four risk factors that need to be balanced. No one is a killer risk, equally no factor is a magic bullet. Hosts need to consider the density of their gathering, how much people circulate, the duration people are there and size. Size, in particular, is related to underlying risk, particularly the rate of infection in the community. The magnitude of this underlying risk is another key consideration. When we looked at mass gatherings, we found the behaviours they prompt, communal travel, gathering indoors in bars or cafes or collective overnight stays, were as much of a risk as the event itself. Finally, the key overall risk of outdoor embeds is that sporadic transmission will escalate to a cluster outbreak. It's essential, therefore, that organisers are able to facilitate rapid contact tracing. So hosts need to consider what other behaviours might be prompted, density, circulation, size and duration for every part of their event and how they can facilitate contact tracing. There's generally been a presumption against hosting outdoor gatherings, but because outdoor transmission risk in everyday life is so low, we believe this presumption should be reversed. Our conclusion is that in many sectors and for many sizes and formats, it should be possible to put appropriate evidence-based mitigations in place to deliver outdoor events and activities in a way that doesn't escalate the risk from sporadic transmission the cluster outbreaks.